It's April 10th, 2002. What happened after a 24-year-old aspiring rapper named Big Lurch with a promising rap career was spotted at night by a neighbor running in the yard naked, covered in blood, staring into the moonlight sky. When the approaching officer shined the light on him, he growled like an animal. Born in Fort Worth, Texas, and later growing up in the streets of East Dallas, Antron Singleton was known for his artistic abilities since a kid, starting with poetry, which later grew into becoming an inspiring rap artist, starting with his first rap name, G Spade, then later changing it to Big Lurch after moving to California with a dream to take over the rap game. Blending in with many crowds, he started making a name for himself in the late 90s Bay Area. Rap working with popular rap artists like RBL Posse, Looney Coleon, and even Mac Dre, eventually forming a rap group called Cosmic Slop Shop with some local Bay Area rappers named Booney Baby and Rick Rock. They would hit big time signing with MCA Records, releasing their first album in 1998 titled The Family, spawning a minor hit called Sinful, which actually charted on hip-hop billboards at number 18. After disappointing record sales, friction within the group coupled with label disputes, they were soon dropped resulting in the rap crew eventually breaking up, never to record their second album. Dooney Baby and Rick Rock eventually joined other rap groups like The Federation and Stressmatic, while Big Lurch took the solo path as a rapper, but was unable to create enough buzz to get anything going, feeling discouraged about chasing his dreams to be a rap star. It's now 2000, Big Lurch is driving home from celebrating his 24th birthday when a drunken driver came out of nowhere and got wrecked leaving Lurch in a coma, paralyzed in the hospital with injuries including a broken neck. After some time, feeling blessed to have made it out of the coma, finishing rehab and discharged after recovery. Unfortunately, he was left with a now lifelong chronic pain from injuries leading to him seeking any drug that would ease his pain. And the only drug that helped the most was PCP, but we will call it Sherm for the video. Just to mention, Sherm was originally developed as an anesthetic drug. Now feeling dependent on Sherm, it developed into an addiction, coincidentally leading to him being diagnosed bipolar with three admissions of psychosis. Falling on hard times will lead him deep into the street life, moving to Los Angeles for a connect he found to start earning money, pushing dope in the neighborhoods of LA. Falling in love with the fast money, which was more than he ever seen, allowing him to take over several locations he would sell dope out of called trap houses that he kept boarded up with guard dogs, using the money to fund his then failing rap career and addiction at the same time. While dodging rival drug dealers and gang members, he started to make new connections in the rap scene again, actually creating another little buzz locally, even leading to a new record deal with Stress Free Records. One night after attending the Hoodie Awards, Big Lurch and some friends hosted an after party at his nearby apartment slash dope house he had been living in with two roommates, Thomas Moore and his girlfriend, Tanisha. To get the party started, according to Big Lurch, he was used to small doses of sherm, but this night turned into to a full wet cigarette sherm party that he underestimated, eventually blacking out. Then suddenly, the worst case scenario, waking up in jail, already serving two weeks with an assigned lawyer who was also his label owner, Milton Grimes. Now I'm sure some of you are surprised like I was that his high lasted for two weeks. However, after some research, too much sherm can lead to a PCP psychosis, which causes bad psychotic symptoms that can last for six weeks. On top of that, at his already diagnosed diagnosis of bipolar and you could just imagine Smokey from Friday in the pigeon coop. So yeah, Lurch was zooted. Suffering a bad sherm hangover, Big Lurch was now told the horrifying story according to his label owner, a signed attorney, of what happened after he blacked out. That night, as the party grew to a close, according to witnesses, Big Lurch became paranoid from being too high and ordered everyone that didn't live there to leave the apartment, leaving 21-year-old Tanisha, who was assumed to be high off Sherm as well. Later that night, a friend of Tanisha, who stayed in the same apartment complex, Elisa Allen, was shocked at what she seen outside of the parking lot. At six foot seven, Big Lurch, naked, covered in blood, running through the streets. She quickly called the cops and immediately ran to her friend's apartment to check on everyone one aside. As she discovered the gruesome crime scene, she let out a scream. Laying dead on the floor was a friend, 21-year-old 
Tanisha, a mother of two kids. Her body was mutilated with her chest cut wide open, even missing a lung with bite marks all over her face and arms. When the cops arrived to find Big Lurch still outside roaming the streets like a zombie, according to the arresting officer, when he flashed his light on him, Lurch growled like an animal. But what was even worse is he had a partial lung in his hand that appeared as if Lurch was eating. Shocked by the details, trying to understand everything, he was told by Grimes the plan his attorney slash labor owner's advice for the case was is to make it look as worse and crazy as possible to get a lesser sentence by pleading insanity for the murder. Immediately, Lurch would deny the charges, but unfortunately, he would go on to be found guilty and receive two life sentences for the murder of Tanisha. That should be the end of the story, but to throw a loop in the case, Tanisha's own mother believes Big Lurch is innocent, and surprisingly enough, some evidence does justify her claims. Per several reports, the officers did not handle the crime scene properly, assuming they had the killer since he was obviously covered in her blood, clenching her lung and hand. At the police station, they had tested a piece of flesh that Lurch threw up, with tests coming back that it did not belong to Lurch, which would explain the lung he was feasting on. And with all of this, the cops assumed the case was closed, shut and sealed. So why would there be any confusion? Well, apparently and obviously the house was covered in blood, yet there was no DNA found of Big Lurch placing him at the crime scene. Even the weapon used, which was a metal tricycle bike that appeared to be the weapon that knocked out the victim which had a bloody handprint on it that did not match Big Lurch's DNA, including the bloody footprints and handprints. Also, the bite marks did not match Lurch's bite pattern. The only positive DNA result was that blood covered on Lurch, which did match the victim. The officers overseeing the crime scene never cross-examined or took DNA from anyone else that attended the party, including the victim's boyfriend, Thomas Moore, who the mother believes is the real killer. In an old interview from the DVD, Rhyme and Punish, released in 2011, the mother said her daughter was in an abusive relationship with Thomas. The mother claims her daughter was looking for a way to break up with him, even packing her clothes to leave him the night before the party. So the mother believes the only person that truly had a motive to kill her daughter was Thomas, which some believe how badly her wounds were, it appeared to be a murder of passion. To add further confusion wrapped in a conspiracy, here's the full claims some people are making in defense of Big Lurch. Thomas was upset that the victim no longer wanted to be with him, so in a fit of rage, he murdered her, stabbing her several times in her chest. After realizing what he had done, he needed to find a way to escape. Seeing Big Lurch zooted out of his mind in the living room, he came up with a plan to blame it on him, making the murder appear so gruesome that only a high lunatic could do such a thing, allowing the dogs to feast on the body as well. Before leaving, he drugged them both even more to make it appear they were getting too high together, resulting in Lurch having a crazy cannibal murderous episode. Eventually, Eventually leaving the scene with Big Lurch the only person to blame. To make matters worse, for Lurch, he was covered in the victim's blood, but how? Apparently the excuse is during his psychosis, he stumbled upon her lung on the ground, picking it up, which resulted in the blood from the organ bleeding all over his body, but not from the actual murder itself. Now, still within the conspiracy, it was claimed that the label owner decided to cover for Thomas and set out to make Big Lurch appear as a deranged crackhead, even providing the courts with unreleased songs that included lyrics of Lurch referencing serial killers in his music. During the trial, Lurch was still in psychosis and didn't understand anything that was going on until it was too late. Also, his attorney didn't care to mention Lurch's history of being bipolar, which would have qualified him for at least pleading insanity, resulting in a lesser sentence. The attorney also failed to mention how there was no evidence placing his client at the crime scene nor on the victim's body, and instead pleaded him out as guilty. Lurch in several interviews also claims that his attorney has ties to gang politics with Thomas Moore, which would rival Lurch, placing him as the casualty to the street code. To be fair, his attorney Milton Grimes did have a client, Sherilyn Massip, in 1988, running over her own six weeks old baby boy, claiming it was due to having voices in her head. She claimed after recently giving birth, she had postpartum depression, which would prove insanity and resulting in her actually being found not guilty because of it. Now, could this be a case where the attorney slash labor owner believed Lurch was the murderer and didn't care to truly represent his client fully due to the manner in which it appeared. I'll let you decide. Another question worth asking is where was Thomas when Lurch was claimed to have kicked everything
everyone out of the party except for the people who lived there, which would have included Thomas. And why would Thomas leave his high girlfriend with Lurch, who was clearly zooted out of his mind? Could this be a case of a full on conspiracy to cover the true real killer's tracks with an easy motive to place a blame on the deranged crackhead of the party? Or was it simply a horrorcore rapper who had a history of mental issues leading him to turn into a flesh eating monster? Regardless of what you believe, to end the video on a lighter note, I'll leave you with a fun fact. Throughout high school together, Snoop Dogg used to sell Cameron Diaz weed.